What is going on with Stephon Diggs and the Buffalo Bills, and can this be fixed this offseason? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can check out her work at Pro Football Focus, Behind the Steel Curtain, and Yahoo. On today's show, we're going to be discussing some of the biggest winners and losers from round two of the NFL playoffs. We're going to talk about Baker Mayfield and the Bucks. We're going to talk about the Texans uh, after getting blown out by the Ravens. But let's start in Buffalo. Kate, um, as a lifelong Bills fan, I'm still trying to recover from <laughs> last night's game. Doing my sorry best. for your loss. It's okay. It's all right. Um, <laughs> let, let's talk about Stefan Diggs because I think that's one of the biggest stories coming out of this game. One catch for seven yards, and I think it was eight targets. Um, sorry, three catches for 21 yards. I was looking at his rushing yards. Three catches for 21 yards on eight targets. Just Seemed to be off for the last two months. He had a beautiful deep ball throw by Josh Allen that he dropped that might have iced the game. What's your read on the situation? What's going on? It's not good, Marcus. I mean, you look at his involvement. So in the playoffs alone, right? 73 total receiving yards. 73 receiving yards. And I mean, Marcus, you look at that total, right? And since the the month of November, he has exceeded 73 receiving yards in a, a single game just twice. Twice. He has not had a 100-yard receiving game since the month of October. October 15th, back in week six against the Giants. Like, it is absolutely bizarre, Marcus. And I want to say, like, I'm I'm kind of befuddled here just a little bit because you looked at the start, right? He was off to a red hot flaming start. So through the first six weeks of the season, he was on a 17 game pace for 1757 receiving yards and 14 touchdowns. Mm. How does that turn into the season that we saw? Because the only way I can conceive in my mind is if he's not healthy. And there Which, hasn't, like, there haven't been, you know, reports that, like, yeah, you know, St- Stefan Diggs is really struggling uh, since he suffered this injury in like week seven. Like, no, he was on the injury report heading into this game, but like, this hasn't been some sort of storyline where, you know, he's playing banged up all season long. So like, is there something else going on that we're not accounting for? Because it's really hard to fathom a guy that starts that red hot. He was averaging, you know, almost 13 yards per reception, um, you know, a a 74% catch rate. Like he was killing it. So what, what am I missing about what is going on with Stefan Diggs? It cannot just be, that he happened to turn 30 years old, which he did. Uh, He had a birthday um, in in the month of November. So it cannot be (laughs) just that he turned, or actually I think it's like the beginning of December, but he had a birthday. He (laughs) had a, uh, sorry, November 29th, right in the middle. He had a birthday. It cannot just be that he turned 30 years old and snapped in half. What's going on? I think there's a lot of different things that we have to remember. Uh, so think about how the, la- the how the season ended last year, right? There was a, the argument on the sideline between Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. And then remember we had, was there is it OTAs or mini camps? He didn't show up and there was some big discussions all about that. Uh, and then there have been whispers that he is a little bit banged up. He's been nursing a foot injury for the last several months. And that's one of the reasons why he doesn't look quite as as explosive 
And then if you remember early or in the middle part of the season, there was a Trayvon Diggs tweets about how he needs to get his brother out of Buffalo and they're not using him correctly. And he wants out. I just think there's a lot going on here. Kate. And um, I think the ultimate outcome here is going to be that the bills are going to trade him now. Trading him actually costs Buffalo $3 million on the salary cap this year, but it will save them about oh, almost $30 million in 2025 and then another $30 million in 2026. My guess is they do that and they start to restructure some other deals into that cap space uh, for the future. It just gives them an out. Um, and I think there are going to be teams that want Stefan Diggs. I do think the Cowboys are potentially one of those teams that would love to have Stefan Diggs in Dallas. I, I I do wonder like if this is if this is the last time that we've seen Stefan Diggs in a Buffalo Bills uniform. It just feels like Marcus, like where there's smoke, there's fire. And it just has felt like we've seen smoke in this situation for about a year now. And yeah. you just kind of wonder like this is a team that obviously hit a sort of boiling point this year firing Ken Dorsey moving on finding um you know the the kind of rhythm they did in the second half of the season and Stefan Diggs wasn't really a part of that like it, it, as significantly as you would have expected and I think you know we kind of saw Josh Allen as he spread the ball around he started to look a little bit better he was making smarter decisions he wasn't just chucking the ball down and say like, ah, heck, Stefan Diggs is down there somewhere. And he was committing fewer turnovers. This offense had more rhythm when they were utilizing all of their playmakers, not just feeding Stefan Diggs 12 targets per game. Now, were they feeding him less targets? Because there's clearly they feel like they're on the same page or off the same. Page. I, like, I just, I don't, I, he just did not look like the same guy in the second half of the year. The, he the doesn't year. look healthy. Like no, there's he not, doesn't look healthy. He doesn't look like the Stefan Diggs that no. we all know and love. So Marcus, I think maybe that's the question of like, what do you do with Stefan Diggs long-term? Because obviously you mentioned uh, there's a, a chance that maybe we see him on a new team here in 2024. Is there any team that you look at and you say, this is a destination where Stefan Diggs's dynasty value increases exponentially? Or are you trying to offload him on the kind of hope that you're going to, you know, conjure well, you're, here? You're, that you're not going to, you're not going to get anything for him in a trade, right? Just because he's been so bad at the second half of the year. And I think everybody's going to remember this playoff game, you know, when you try to trade him. Maybe there's a, a somebody in your league that will look at the name value and give you something relevant for him. I, I doubt it. Um, but no, he's he's not somebody that I particularly want on my team because you know he is getting past that age 30 threshold that we see these receivers decline all the time. And maybe he ends up in a situation where he's the number one receiver attached to a really good quarterback but that's what he was doing in Buffalo. I mean, that's the second best quarterback in the league behind Patrick Mahomes that he was playing with. And he still wasn't able to be productive over the last three months. So I, I have my real doubts that he's ever going to be anything more than a wide receiver three uh, for the rest of his career. That is, that is a bold statement. Now, uh, you know, dynasty league ADP, um, what kind of, trades are you looking to make for Stefan Diggs where uh, what players what uh, let's start with wide receivers what wide receivers in a similar range do you think are a comparable asset that you would trade straight up for Stefan Diggs right now Dynasty League startup has him drafted as the wide receiver 27 oh on my average. gosh that is there's probably 10 guys after him that I would take uh I wasn't straight up I'd rather have Khalil Shakir who is probably no. going to be the most number one receiver. Yeah, I would. I would. I We even saw it the last two months, Kate. Like, this is just somebody who's getting significantly more targets. He's going to be the receiver that's still on the roster. Gabe Davis is going to leave as a free agent. Khalil Shakir is probably going to be locked and loaded to eight to nine targets a game by Josh Allen. I, I, give me Khalil Shakir. I'd rather be a year early than a year late on a Shakir. Amari Cooper. Amari. 
Devonte Adams. Devonte. Christian Watson. Diggs. Oh wow! I just um, don't trust Watson to stay healthy at all. <laughs> no, I'm I'm taking Diggs pretty easily there. Yeah. Uh, Josh Downs. Diggs. Okay. All right. So Christian I think Kirk, much rather have Kirk over. Uh, over our guy, Stefan Diggs. It's not great, Kate. Let's just be clear. It's it's not great when it comes to Stefan Diggs. But you know who was pretty great on Sunday? Baker Mayfield. Let's mm-hmm. talk about Baker in his dynasty value moving forward next. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move that I can make that'll take my business to the next level? LinkedIn knows that your success all depends on the team that you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have this many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or the resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, that process is so quick and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL. That is linkedin.com slash NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel okay let's talk about baker mayfield now the the bucks didn't get the win um on sunday baker did throw two interceptions one was tipped at the, the at the line the other one uh was at the end of the game when he was just trying to make things happen um but overall i thought he played pretty well 26 of 41 for 349 yards and three touchdowns I know Tampa Bay lost this game, but coming out of it, I actually feel even better about Baker. I mean, I, I think you have to feel really good about Baker. Baker just played himself into, I think, a, a pretty significant hefty contract. I would be super surprised if he doesn't walk away from this with a $40 million per year contract, maybe three years, a hundred. I think it's going to be more. Like more? Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe three years, a hundred and forty. I think he gets 45 million a year. Okay. So, you know, obviously career best, right? Uh, had 4,044 uh, passing yards, 28 passing touchdowns, um, you know, through just a 1.8% interception rate. This was Baker Mayfield's best season of his career by far. And I think it translated far beyond the box score. But here's why I'm not buying. Baker Mayfield in Dynasty, which right now, Marcus, we had a fresh batch of Dynasty ADP drafted on average as the quarterback 18, which man, oh man, had he climbed his way up the ranks from last year because he was all but left for dead, ranked as the quarterback 19 in fantasy points per game. And Marcus, this was a year that this was a weird year for quarterbacks. There are a lot of injuries that I think skewed a lot of numbers. Only had four finishes all year long as a top 10 quarterback, six finishes as a top 12 quarterback. Um, You know, again, ranked 19th in fantasy points per game. That is not a ton of upside. Now, I'm one of Baker Mayfield's biggest fan. I love that dog in him. I love the way he plays football. But when I'm looking at these lower end, you know, QB twos in Dynasty, that's where I'm looking to you know, try to find a little bit of upside here. And I'm just not seeing it with Baker Mayfield. Some quarterbacks that I can draft behind him that I think have a little bit more upside. Kirk Cousins, QB 19. Will Levis, QB 22. Deshaun Watson, QB 23. Russell Wilson, even QB 24. Like 
there are plenty of options behind him that I think actually offer a little bit more bang for your buck, even though I do think Baker Mayfield played extremely well. Like this is one of those situations that I do think from a standpoint of fantasy value versus real life on the field value. I don't think Baker Mayfield's price, you know, in, in production for fantasy is ever going to match up to that dog we see on the field. Uh, this one's tough because generally I agree with you. Like when you're starting to look for QB twos, that mid range of guys, like, I don't know, to a Kyler, uh, you're looking for some upside, you know, guys that could potentially develop into QB ones and like two and Kyler, they've shown when they're healthy, they can do that. Right. There is a point though, Kate, when you get down to like past QB 17, QB 18, where I am looking for guys that are just a, a, a stable option where I know they're going to be the team starting quarterback moving forward because there's so much turmoil and there's so many of these teams that flip these quarterbacks at the end. So it's why I, I I like Deshaun Watson a little bit at the price. You said QB 23, I believe, right? Yep. I mean, Deshaun Watson is going to be the starting quarterback for the Browns for the foreseeable future. Because for the rest of my life, it feels right. like. Yes. Uh, and I think Deshaun Watson, or excuse me, I think Baker Mayfield is going to be the starting quarterback for Tampa for the next two or th to three years. And if he can replicate anything we saw like this year, it's going to be worth that price tag because you're going to get a 17 game starter, somebody who throws a bunch of times and probably is going to have 28 to 30 something touchdowns. I, I, I just don't mind that price at QB 18 at all. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Now, I think a part of this that we need to talk about is what does the price and, and the situation for Mike Evans do for the value of Baker Mayfield? Because he is set to hit free agency this year. We know that there were some bumps in the road in terms of getting that contract extension done. There was a little bit of, I don't know, I did a little bit of tension, just a little bit, um, you know, in, in terms of what it seemed like the vibes were heading for. It didn't seem like they were going to get a, an extension done. It kind of felt like this was the last year that we were going to see Mike Evans in red and black, red and white. I don't know, whatever you want to consider the uniform. Pewter. I think it's pewter. pewter. Pew yeah. Ah, that's right. Pewter. Um, felt like the last year we were going to see Mike Evans wearing pewter. And I don't, I, I look at the year that he had with Baker Mayfield. And I do think it would just be totally egregious not to bring both of them back and continue on what they're building. But if Mike Evans isn't going to be in Tampa Bay, I think that blows Baker. It knocks Mayfield's. It. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. If Baker doesn't have Mike Evans and it's just Goblin and Trey Palmer, I'll still like Baker. Cause I think he's a good player. Really? But not a yeah, not at QB 18, though. I think more down in the QB 22, QB 23 range. Um, but can we just really quickly talk about Mike Evans before we move on? Because he's one of the most interesting players for me in Dynasty this year because I don't think – we talked about Stephon Diggs potentially being washed up. I don't think that's the case with Mike Evans. And I think there's a case that if Mike Evans goes to a different team with a maybe more dynamic quarterback – Maybe we could see this prime continue to extend. Like, I'm going to give you a couple, of, a couple of examples. Some of the whispers around the league is that if T. Higgins gets $28 million a year in free agency, maybe the better play for the Bengals would be to let T. Higgins walk, sign Evans for making up a number, $17 million a year, and let him be the wide receiver too, opposite of Chase. I think that's really, really interesting. Very, uh, that would be very interesting. Now imagine Mike Evans going to a team with a young budding quarterback, like Jordan Love. Oh, sure. man. Uh, uh, like there are a lot of situations where you could look at Mike Evans and you can see his value potentially increasing. And what if he went to Buffalo? It, he looks great. Yeah. What if he went to Buffalo and they moved on from Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs, and now he's that alpha X receiver on the outside who Ooh. Josh Allen's throwing these 60 yard bombs to down the field like i think that makes a lot of sense as well I, I i actually really like uh mike evans at his price tag at wide receiver 33 but i won't be surprised if he goes to a better situation and all of a sudden he's back up to wide receiver 26 wide receiver 27 i'm i'm, I'm just monitoring that as we get closer to free agency 
I definitely think that that is a a palatable price tag for Mike Evans. You know, you know, I I think he's shown us like the the upside here is still as high as it's ever been for Mike Evans. Um, and I think that was, you know, obviously a, a question mark, like in the post Tom Brady era, how high do we really see his value go? Like it, he didn't lose much value He's a wide receiver, eight in fantasy points per game this year. Um, just absolutely dominant. Another thousand yard season in the Incredible. books easily, uh, 13 receiving touchdowns. I mean, you know exactly what you're going to get with Mike Evans. And I do think he's at the point in his career where he's going to find himself in an ideal situation because I don't I think he wants to settle for anything less. I think this is a really good time to buy Mike Evans. But if we're moving on from Mike Evans in the Tampa Bay era and we're keeping Baker Mayfield there. I still like him. I Peter, still like him. I do not. And that okay. is where we will differ. That's fine. Uh, let's talk about the Houston Texans. Uh, impressive playoff win last week. Not so much this week, but a really, really bright future, especially maybe at the running back position. We will talk about that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is over and we're getting closer and closer to the big game. But there's still time to get in on the action with America's number one sports book. And that is FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. Or you can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more. You can even go bet on who's going to win next year's Super Bowl. I saw that FanDuel put out those lines this morning. Absolutely incredible. Your Steelers, I think, are 75 to 1. My Cowboys are at 20 to 1, which is not great. Uh, oh, well, go bet on the team that'll actually win. Uh, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Every day is on tomorrow's show. Kate and I are going to continue to break down some of the recent batch of ADP from DynastyLeagueFootball.com. We're going to talk about some of the biggest surprises, winners uh, at the quarterback and tight end position. So make sure you tune in for that. But let's talk about the Texans, Kate, really quickly. Um, they did not run the ball well against Baltimore. 14 carries for 38 yards. Nine of them came from C.J. Stroud. Devin Singletary was their leading rusher, 9 for 22. Damian Pierce did not receive a touch uh, in the receiving game or in the running game. He's basically been relegated to special teams work. Devin Singletary is a free agent after this year. What's going on in Houston? Uh, I, I think we're looking at the end of the, the Devin Singletary era, which... Uh, you know, he's, he's going to hit free agency. I think we're at the end of the Damian Pierce era. So I think what we're looking at is a very promising future at the running back position. And Marcus, there are a lot of really hot names about to hit free agents here, here in the running back market. You look at the Houston Texans didn't spend a ton of resources devoted to the run, right? This year, 444 rush attempts. That was uh, tied for the 12th fewest in the league. Uh, in terms of rushing yards, 10th fewest in the league, just didn't didn't find any sort of rhythm. Averaged 3.7 yards per rush attempt as a team. They've got to find, I think, a little bit more balance. Like coming out of the gate, I think okay. we looked at the, the Texans passing game with C.J. Stroud, and we said there's no way that they can continue to shoulder this many like dropbacks per game for C.J. Stroud. But they did, I think, out of necessity in a, a large part because there there wasn't any rhythm in the run game. Some inconsistencies on the offensive line. They had some injuries. Like there was, there's a lot of of you know different moving pieces there that I think made that you know a, a part of their game plan that they couldn't do. But Marcus coming up in free agency, they're going to have their pick of the crop, and I I wouldn't be surprised if they brought. Devin Singletary back based on Neither would I. Nope. like it, it's not going to cost him anything. Right. I, I think they found themselves a, just a, a really solid and consistent contributor, but 
Marcus, you look at the running back market and they're going to have their pick of the crop in terms of what kind of running back. Cause there's a, a lot of different style runners, right? Like, mm -hmm. but you know, whether they want a, a receiving back, whether they want a bruiser, you've got, this is some of the names that are uh, about to hit free agency here. Derek Henry, Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley, Austin Eckler, uh, Deandre Swift. Mm -hmm. There are so many options here at the running back position. Like they, they, they're going to have their pick of whoever they want. And I think that's a very intriguing spot to be because Marcus, this is a team that I think is going to uh, continue to score a lot of points already in year one with their rookie quarterback ranked 13th in the league, 377 total points uh, ranked 12th in the league in terms of total yardage produced average 5.4 yards per play that also ranked uh, top 12. Like, this is a team that I think is going to continue being a very fruitful offense and insert name here. I want that running back on my roster heading into 2024. Uh, there's a possibility that they could use one of their top three picks in the top hundred to, to select the running back. Although this is not a great running back class. We will get to that. The more that we dive into our draft film and all that kind of stuff. I think the best thing here for Houston is just to, Rent one of these running backs on a two-year deal. They've got so much cap space. I, I think they're $70 million projected right now of cap space. They're going to have more once they cut some aging veterans. I think the best strategy here is to grab a guy that can come in, play all three downs. It's really good in the receiving game, really good as a pass protector, and just spend, I don't know, like I'm going to make up a number. I, I, I won't be surprised if Josh Jacobs – and or Tony Pollard get like two years, $20 million on the open market. And if you can get Josh Jacobs, who is an awesome pass protector, and he led the NFL in rushing yards in 2022 on a 10-year deal, it's a drop in the bucket for, for Houston. You save your draft picks to use on the defensive side of the ball. I, I think this is the best landing spot for these potential free agents. Um, and I think – I. I'm going to anticipate that Houston's going to be a player when it comes to these elite running backs. Don't expect them to go for the older guys like Austin Eckler, Derrick Henry. I, I think they would like to get somebody who, who's in the 25 to 26 year old, you know, bracket. But I think this is, I mean, if you if you're Tony Pollard, this might be the best situation out there you can get. I think that's fair. I would not be surprised though. Like, imagine we see Derrick Henry who. Let's be honest, like this has been a, a guy who has largely had the Texans number for the bulk of his career. Um, I would love, love, love to see a guy like Derrick Henry go into this. Like, obviously, Derrick Henry wants to come into a team where he knows they're going to be in contention. I think Derrick Henry, like, you know, I, I've talked about some signs of decline for Derrick Henry this season in terms of like, you know, his, his average speed, his top miles per hour that just show you maybe that, you know, he's, he's lost just even a little bit of his step. But I mean, Marcus, what he has done against the, the Houston Texans throughout his career, you gotta admit that it would be really freaking fun to see this guy who is average. And again, this is, you know, in, in AFC South rival. Okay. So he's played this team a ton, average 102 rush yards per game against the Houston Texans. If Derrick Henry went and played in Houston, I'm I'm going to trade for Derrick Henry in the leagues that I'm contending in because I think that he could be a really interesting fit. Maybe get a Derrick Henry and, you know, one of these other kind of less expensive but explosive elements. So you get that sort of one, two punch, you get the, the force of Derrick Henry, but you get, you know, maybe that a little bit extra explosive element, maybe sign Derrick Henry and Deandre Swift and form like the ultimate one, two punch. I don't know. I'm just saying I, my goal is to see Derrick Henry wearing, um, a, the Oilers, what what are the what are the color schemes here? I'm bad yeah. with color schemes, yeah, but blue and red. I don't know. <laughs> the blue and red, but how fun would that be to I, take I, it back? I don't know. I I I'm just in the stars now. I, I I just have some questions about his fit in the offense. They run that 
Shanahan wide zone offense. And it's not maybe the best fit for Derrick Henry, but I, I get it. I, he's killed them for so many years. Now it would be fun to see him on that side of the ball. Uh, we'll see. I'm really curious to see what happens with Houston in the running back situation, because this is a spot where if a Tony Pollard or a Josh Jacobs shows up, they could instantly be, you know, a top five, top six running back next year. So keep a lookout on that Houston spot. Keep a lookout for the Lot Done Dynasty podcast on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Go check out the show again on YouTube. Kate posts uh, videos every single day, with, including some shorts. Check those out. Go follow her on Twitter uh, at Kate Majuk. Uh, go check out her work at Behind the Steel Curtain, Yahoo, and Pro Football Focus. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.